Hello, Mr. Reichenberg. This is my video on my theological reflection upon my service hours. So for my indirect service hours, I helped as a shooter tutor almost for goalies at the Micucci Goalie School ran by Mr. Anthony Micucci. Um, there, I pretty much was just providing my expertise in the hockey realm, if you will, and I was shooting on younger goalies that were trying to develop and kind of trying to, you know, take their game to the next level because I'm a pretty high-end hockey player. I've been playing competitive, very competitive hockey at the highest level you can in the United States at 18 years old, so I was almost, you know, teaching them the certain ways around seeing the puck better and, you know, teaching them how to become a better goalie and how to, you know, fix their angles and other stuff like that. Um, for the other uh, indirect hours I did, I helped serve as a tour guide for open house. Usually that would count for my school event, but I had already previously done the mini classes for my school event. So um, the indirect hour aspect of it was I was just basically a tour guide for any student who was looking at St. Francis for their high school career. Um, I provided my insights and, you know, taught them what I know, what I've learned and what I love about the school and, you know, all the good stuff that, you know, we're, we're constantly taught throughout our four years here and our morals and the things that you kind of take with you as you leave the high school. Um, so that was my indirect. Um, for my direct service hours, I did um, something called Feed More Western New York. And basically that's where I went to a warehouse and I helped box up um, certain foods, canned goods, um, different type of foods just for the, um, you know, kind of uh, the homeless and the people in need. Um, that was a pretty cool experience because I got to do that with my family. A lot of my family members came to help with that. So it was nice to have a kind of a group with me while doing that. Um, I also went to Roswell Park and... Um, kind of served as a shadow for Miss Amanda Johnson, who is one of my good friend's mothers. Um, that, so that, that experience was also really cool because you get to kind of connect with people that almost need a younger person to connect with. And they need to see like a person who's, you know, joyful and jolly as they're kind of in a pretty rough state. Um, my mother worked at Roswell Park for a really long time as a physical therapist and she, you know, her, her job entailed her having to deal with patients that were almost beyond cure so she she saw some pretty sad stuff there and she told me that it'd be a really good idea to go and you know kind of just show face because a lot of those people are you know they're old they're cancer patients and whatnot so they they almost have like a like a dreadful life in the sense that they have to kind of do the same thing every every day and they didn't really ever get to experience you know seeing a like a grandkid, for example. So that was really cool for me just to be able to be around those kind of people and just kind of, you know, shining my light into their life and helping them make their day a little bit better. Um, some of the skills that helped me during my service, and I feel like some of the skills that developed over my service was my ability to understand empathy more in a sense. So I, I, I really don't think I had as much of an idea of empathy as I did before completing the service. And now I can kind of see myself, you know, after seeing some of the patients at Roswell and seeing some of the, you know, young students trying to see if there's a good, see if their life is a good fit in St. Francis high school or, um, you know, helping goalies or, you know, helping the homeless. I can kind of feel like what those people have to go through on a daily basis. So it almost kind of gave me like a, a gratitude for the things I have and everything that, you know, I have, um, in my life. I also learned a lot of patience as it was a pretty, a lot of my service was pretty lengthy and it was usually, um, pretty boring per se, but not boring, just kind of like, you know, you're doing manual labor, so it's not exactly fun, but at the end of it, it it's almost like a really good feeling in the heart and you kind of feel warm about it, which I really enjoyed. So I kind of went into it with like the, Oh, here we go again, service hours mindset. And I kind of came out with like a, Hey, that was actually pretty cool. So for me, it was almost like I, I learned to kind of appreciate and my skills developed in the sense that I can now, you know, take my, my talents that I didn't really know I had into certain aspects of my daily life and serve without actually having to do service hours. Um, uh, some of the talents, talents and weaknesses that I learned about myself, I, I, one of my talents that I've, I learned that I kind of have is the ability to kind of cheer people up. I think that was one of the coolest things for me. And that was in the sense that, um, some of the goalies that I, you know, shot on 
for hockey and some of the people I met at Roswell, they were, they were kind of almost not like confident in the sense that some of the goalies were not so confident with a high school player playing prep hockey, shooting on them that was 17 years old. So it was almost cool for them to like make a save on me. And then they were like, yes, like it was like a cool feeling. And for the people at Roswell, it was almost like I learned that one of my talents is like being able to make people feel at home and feel like almost like they belong again. So that was cool for me. Um, some of the weaknesses I think I learned from my service is definitely taping boxes. Um, at Feedmore, Western New York, I was taping boxes and I struggled extraordinarily uh, poorly on that as I had to use one of those tape things and come across the box and I was doing it pretty slowly. So my family was getting a little annoyed with me as we were trying to get things moving so we could keep the line flowing as we had a lot of boxes to get through. And when I was on the tape, I was not very... Um, great so i would say that was one of the the weaknesses i learned um my service really outweighed my expectations in the sense that i was not expecting to enjoy it and take as much out of it as i actually did um i kind of go into i have a tendency to go into things that i don't want to do with a pretty terrible mindset in the sense that like it's a forced feeling um and i always tend to come out of it with like a wow that was actually not so bad and that was my service for this year was I kind of learned things about myself that I really never would have learned without you know actually doing service so it was cool um if I was to do service again if I was to do some of the things I did again I would say I would go into it with a better mindset as I went into it with such a poor mindset and came out with such a great mindset so if I'm feeling if I went in with a better mindset I almost feel like I could you know get a better feel for what I'm actually doing. And I, I feel like I would appreciate it a lot more. Um, one of the most memorable stories for me for this entire, this entire time was, um, going to dinner with my family after it was almost like a lunch slash dinner. It was like four, four or five o'clock after I uh, served at Western New York, uh, feed more Western New York. I went to uh, dinner with my family after, and it was really cool for me because um, I was, it was my first year doing this and my family has done this for years past. Um, so my grandma Gert who had, who passed away for, uh, a while back, she was always involved with this feed more Western New York program and she was always a constant volunteer. So when we got to the lunch slash dinner, we went to, um, as a family, we almost poured out my, uh, my whole family ordered a beer. I, obviously I couldn't, um, but we kind of poured a little sip out for my grandmother, uh, in, in a separate cup, we ordered her a cup and we got an extra seat. So it was almost like she was there with us, um, which was really cool for me because I had never really thought of that. Like we were almost doing it for my service hours, but we were also doing it for like keeping the tradition in my family with my grandmother. Um, honestly, I think that that relates to, you know, like a sense of like resurrection, if you will, because we, we kind of go through a day, we, we go through our day with, you know, with thinking about Jesus and other sorts of things. And we go through them with, with like a subconscious feeling that he's always with us. And that's kind of what made me connect with my grandmother there is like, it almost reminded me that like certain things throughout your day can remind you of things that, you know, people that actually meant a lot to you did. So I never really put two and two together that, you know, my grandma was a huge, um, volunteer at this feed more Western New York. And then I went there and did pretty much the same thing that she did. And it was, it almost felt like she was with me the whole time. So in the sense, I think it has a theological theme of like, you know, the presence when someone passes away. So like God, you know, God passed away on the cross. Well, Jesus passed away on the cross and he's always still with us. He's with me every day of my life. He's with you every day of your life. He's with all of our classmates, everyone on the planet. So it almost felt like it was like a, this like subconscious feeling that I know that there's people who have passed away, but they're still in my life. So that was really cool. Um, my experience was Franciscan in the sense that I felt the the sense of brotherhood in almost every every single thing I did. Um, it was almost cool to feel like I was involved with people that I hadn't really been involved with before, and I was almost able to like transform um, the brotherhood that St. Francis teaches me every single day into the service. Um, so it was like one of those things that was cool because I, I got to feel brotherhood with men, women, people I'd never met before, homeless people, um, elderly people, cancer patients, everything. It was really cool. So, um, I think basically the, the main, the main takeaway from that is that brotherhood can honestly go anywhere. Um, so it was, it was cool. Um, and some of the Catholic social teaching that this, 
uh, kind of my service kind of applies to was I would say is the um, the dignity of work aspect of Catholic social teaching as because I was doing, you know, unpaid work. Most of the things I was doing would have been paid, if you will, if they weren't volunteer as I was, you know, helping and serving the community. So the dignity of work was the Catholic social teaching that was the most present for me because I understood the dignity of working in the sense that, you know, sometimes work isn't exactly what you want it to be. And even though it's not paid and you're just working, you're actually working for a better purpose and you're, you're doing things that you might not have seen yourself doing, but you're doing it for the right reasons. So that was a really important part for me in this whole service experience. Um, but in, in total, the, this service experience was probably my favorite out of the uh, four years that I've been at this school and done certain things as I really felt the need to appreciate it more, if you will, because it's technically the last time that I'm ever going to have to submit service hours in my life again. So now it's almost like I can take this experience from my service hours and translate it into implementing service in my daily life. So yeah, that's my theological reflection upon my service hours. Thank you, Mr. Reichenberg.